friends. Today's tarot reading is number 64. Wow, we've, we've made it to 64. Well, it's our first seven card reading. It's also one that is a bit different. This is the options spread. It's for when you need to make a decision between two paths and you're struggling to understand the consequences of each path. Once again, we will be using the Fantastical Creatures Tarot, and we will see what these wee little beasties have to tell us today. As always, this is a demonstration. This is showing you how you can use tarot. For this one, we're using the entire tarot deck, and typically you would be beginning with a question where you say, which option is best? And then you have to say, what is option A and what is option B? So for example, for myself, yeah, because I've been stressing over this for a while. There are people in my life who I put on timeout, you could say. And the time period in which they are not supposed to contact me is drawing to a close. So option one, let it just finish and allow contact to resume. Option two, extend the amount of time. It's one that others probably can empathize with a little bit. We've all got we all have people in our lives who are difficult to deal with. We've all got those people who we love dearly, but know we have bad habits in dealing with them. That's the kind of scenario I'm talking about for myself here. Card number one is the choice that must be made. It is the start point. And then we'll have two rows of three cards each that give additional information about that choice. So they suggest doing this as two vertical rows next to each other. I am adapting it slightly because of the confines of my camera, where I will have two rows, uh, one on top of the other. This does not mean that I am prioritizing one path over the other, it just shows that there's still the two paths. Cards two and three are the suggested action for each column, or in this case, row. Cards four and five are the unforeseen consequences of the selected path. Cards six and seven are the likely outcome if we choose to follow those paths. So again, the options I'm considering, and the cards may decide to give me information about something else, we'll find out, are is it time to let these people back into my life? Or do I still leave them in timeout? So we're going to shuffle, and we are going to see what the Mythical Beast Tarot has to tell us. I'm sorry, Fantastical Beasts. Helps if I use the right name for it. Okay. So we have card one. Ooh, that's interesting. Two, three. Uh, the top row is option one, let them back in. Card option two is the lower one, which is uh, extend the deadline. Then there is four, five, six, and seven. Let's just confirm real quick. Yeah, those are all centered. Excellent. Card one, the choice to be made, is being represented by the High Priestess, which is kind of fitting because the individuals in question are both women. Traditionally, the High Priestess represents feminine divine power and feminine spiritual instruction. They can also represent a person. 
in this deck, the High Priestess is represented by Uazit. Uazit is an Egyptian deity who has close associations with the god Ra, and in this deck is said to represent either uh, feminine mysteries or women or a woman who is important in the Quarian's life. In this case, that's accurate. <laughs> Uh, almost two on the nose. So option one, should I allow contact again? Who Death reversed is the first card in that row. In this deck, death is represented by Anansi, the spider trickster deity from Africa. And he's all about looking at things from a different perspective. Death is not just endings, it's also new beginnings. As a being in folklore, he is a creator being, and he often tricks people into doing what is best for them. Being reversed, we'll, we'll see if that's actually best, or if it's just a trick, because there's myths of him doing both. Card number two in that row is the moon, which is illusions. It is not always seeing things for what they are, traditionally. In this deck, it is represented by the Unicorn. In many myths, the Unicorn is a supporting character, one who encourages the hero to become their best self, to know themselves. This feels like it is an, a recommendation to seek out the truth, to look beyond what's being said, beyond the demands and the questions, and see what the reality of the situation is. The next card is the expected outcome if I reinitiate contact, which is the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups represents memory, recollections. In this case, it is being represented by, by Yamaya. She is a goddess of the ocean. And within the booklet for this deck, it says that it could represent particularly female friends or an old flame. In this case, um, it would be friends. And that you can use the positive memories you have with these people to move forward. So all in all, that path seems like there will be work to be done but it would be but it would be possible to have positive interactions editing eerie here so i sent a picture of this reading to a friend and this was their immediate response after seeing the first path was i'm sorry the fucking if I do being three tiers of would you like to be stuck in the past? I fucking can't. It's always interesting when you see someone else's reaction to the same cards. Especially when you're trying to read for yourself and you have context that you're trying to be very gentle and forgiving of others. When an outside person just looks at it and is like, no, why would you do that? That's ridiculous. They continued by saying, that's fucking priceless. And the other side is a lot of prosperity, new growth, and your labor's bearing fruit. That's priceless. So not moving forward is the action. Illusions and anxiety will continue. You will end up just in the past. I feel like the cards really called me out and I was trying so hard to be diplomatic, but uh, outside perspective. Something to be aware of when reading tarot for yourself. Sometimes you need someone else to be like, dude, you're trying to be so nice about this and the cards are not being nice right now. So we will uh, get back into it now. 
So the second path or the second option, the choice or the action is being represented by the King of Pentacles. So the King of Pentacles here is being represented by the green man, the old man of the woods, Serenos, which is particularly interesting because I have felt more of a draw, more of a connection to Serenos over the last couple of years. More kinship, I should say. In a traditional sense, the King of Pentacles represents a man who is good with his money, someone who has his house in order. So it seems like the option here is focus on my own house and getting my own house in order. If I choose to not reintegrate with these other individuals. The second card on that path is the Ace of Cups, which are the unforeseen consequences. In this deck, the Ace of Cups is represented by water fairies. Small fae beings who interact with and thrive on human emotion. As is traditional with the Ace of Cups, it represents the beginning of an emotional cycle, an emotional awareness. So the unforeseen consequence would be the beginning of a new cycle associated with whoever this man is. <laughs> the Ten of Pentacles traditionally represents a successful home life where things are taken care of, you have enough for your needs and for many of your wants interesting that they chose to represent this with dwarves because it very much ties in the concept of you only achieve that through hard work. So taking the, the two paths as a whole, choosing to end the to end the time out and start communicating with these individuals again will require a lot of emotional work. It will require Realistically, it will require therapy. It will require looking cautiously at everything that is said and digging for the truth that is behind the words rather than the words themselves. And honestly, that just sounds exhausting right now. Option two would be continue focusing on myself as I have been for the last several months. Still going to be some emotional changes, some emotional cycles here. But it feels like that provides a greater sense of peace, of actually solidifying my position in my own house, in my own household. So I'm definitely going to need to think about this. But that's the option to spread. I know that got kind of personal today, but I didn't see a better way to demonstrate it other than to actually show one of my own dilemmas right now. We are entering holiday seasons and holidays are complicated for a lot of people, myself included. I see, let me start that over. I have lost the joy of most holidays and I'm trying to learn how to derive joy from them again. And in looking at this reading and that understanding, I feel like I need to build my own traditions, my own way of celebrating things, and let those who are trying to force their own agenda pound sand. I need to focus on what brings me joy, not yield to their desire of control. Because they're not actually happy at these holidays either. They just want everyone to pretend to be happy. Well, that got heavy. <laughs> Please do all the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you enjoy what I'm doing, I now have a Buy Me A Coffee page. So if you find yourself with a little extra disposable income and feel like throwing some my way, feel free. 
Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.